Oh, and welcome to Just One More Watch. If that change of intro music brought back a wave of nostalgia, if you can identify what's on my t-shirt today, chances are you remember the 8-bit video gaming era. I certainly do, but I didn't get my 8-bit kicks on a console. No Sega or Nintendo for me. I played my games on the 8-bit home computer, starting with an MSX, the Betamax of its era, great platform but no adoption whatsoever, and at the end of the 8-bit era I got myself the classic ZX Spectrum 48K rubber key. That meant my games didn't look like this or this, instead they looked like this and this. To be honest, pretty similar. Big, bright, colourful, blocky and very pixelated. That's the 8-bit look. The only difference was I didn't slot in a cartridge and press play. I had to listen to this noise coming from my cassette deck while I waited for the game to hopefully load. Cross your fingers. Alright, enough of that. Very sorry. The big news is 8-bit is trendy once more. That pixelated look has gone all hipster. For example, I enjoyed a Zelda burger, I kid you not, a Zelda burger in a Melbourne burger joint dedicated to all things 8-bit a couple of years ago. And surely the zenith of hipsterism, there is now an American brewing company making 8-bit pixelated craft beer. Perhaps not quite the zenith of hipsterism and the 8-bit look though. Brew, a very trendy New York-based microbrand, have come up with an 8-bit version of one of their popular chronograph models. That's what's on my wrist. That's what I'm going to show you today. But I didn't just buy it. It's kindly on loan to the channel from a fellow Sydney cider called Ben. Ben has just started his own YouTube watch review channel called Risty Business. I appreciate another little 80s reference in there, Ben. He's only got six subscribers at the moment, though. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description of the video. Let's see if we can give him some love, show him some appreciation, get him up to 100 plus subscribers. All right, enough retro waffle. Let's flip the camera and have a look at the watch. I guess in for a penny, in for a pound, they've gone full pixel art retro with the packaging as well, which is nice. I'll obviously leave a link in the description of the video to the Brew website. $3.95 for one of these 8-bit versions of the Retrograph Chronograph. Regular ones are $3.75, so you're paying an extra $20 for all this 8-bit goodness. I reckon that price is actually okay. I've looked at various Stratons, Nazumis, etc., which feature this Seiko VK Mecha Quartz movement in it. All around that $400 mark, I think this one justifies the price. A little congratulations, thank you very much for your purchase, which is nice, again with the 8-bit and the brew, the kind of coffee theme there. Apparently Jonathan Ferrer, who is the brand owner, is into industrial design and is into coffees, hence the name of his brand, hence the various coffee graphics and bits and pieces dotted around the watch. There's also a warranty card, though it doesn't actually say how long the warranty is here, more on that later, and there is a just about legible instruction manual. And inside the first retro box is a retro tin. Inside the retro tin is the Brew 8-bit. And there it is. And you know what? I think it looks great. I really do like it. I think it is kind of obviously kitsch, but it isn't in your face. I looked at the Timex Pac-Man. I looked at a Casio Pac-Man before, and they were both very much right in your face. You could wear this one all day, every day, and nobody would notice that you were wearing this kind of retro 8-bit style on your wrist. So there is a tonal case, kind of bar of soap almost, if you like. Don't be fooled by these dimensions. 38 mil in diameter, 41 mil end to end here, but it looks bigger and it wears much bigger on wrist because it is not circular. It's that bar of soap shape. 10.4 mil thick though, nice and slim, 22 millimeter lug width, and on this supplied grain leather strap, this one weighs in at 71 grams. 316 ounce stainless steel case, crown, nice little grippy crown with a coffee bean logo on there. Again, that kind of brew whole coffee theme. There's a coffee cup in various points as well. Stainless steel pushers with little pusher housings also, and it is a flat sapphire crystal. I think there's a reasonable amount of AR coating here. Not incredible, as you can see, my studio lights always challenge most pieces of crystals. This one is no exception, but when I take it outside later on, it does okay for itself. Case finish is nice, it's all well constructed, feels pretty solid. You can see the flat sapphire just sitting proud of the case, maybe half a mil there or so, but not so much that it's gonna catch on anything. Two finishes to the case, there's a high polish band all the way around the middle and it's a nice grade of polish. And there is a mixed brush finish to the upper surface, not quite radially finished because it's a tonal case. The brushing matches the case. So 
horizontal, vertical, and then it's a kind of mixed finish around those four corners also. The leather band is a good one, nice and compliant, comfortable out of the box, nice stitching there as well. It is stamped with the signature coffee bean there and pretty indistinctly stamped with the Brew brand name on the other side. Brushed hardware, nice buckle and tang there with the Brew brand name etched into it once more. It is somewhat conservative, but as I said, I think you could totally get away with this one in an office environment, so I think this slightly underwhelming black leather band actually suits the watch overall. And it's a nice case back as well, quite a thick piece of stainless steel. Four screws in each corner, 50 meters of water resistance. With this one, again, that 8-bit theme continues. It is etched, 8-bit brew, usual spec sheet, stainless steel, sapphire crystal, hybrid mecha quartz movement, and extraction timer. That's what they're referring to this chrono timer as. And I do like the press start, press reset, again, keeping that 8-bit gaming theme running. Now, they don't specify which version of the Seiko VK range of Mecha Quartz movements they've used in this one, but from memory, this dual register plus date of the 6 layout with no ticking second hand is a VK64. One push of the top pusher to start the central chrono timer. You have a day-night 1224-hour indicator there, also pixelated. Love those hands. I'll show you them in macro in just a second. And it is a 60-minute chrono timer over there at the 9 o'clock. Color match date wheel at the 6. One more push to stop, one more push to reset. But let's get it outside and have a look at it under the macro lens. Now, all just printed on, and it's a fairly muted color palette. Again, far more discreet than some of the other retro gaming inspired watches that I have reviewed on the channel in the past. Mostly blue, there's a little bit of yellow, and a kind of brownie red. The coffee cup at the six o'clock, for example, is in that brownie red color. Limited branding as well, just brew in again that signature font above the pinion. That's it. I guess there's enough going on here, you don't have to overbrand it as well. Now, the printed minute track framing the dial is pretty hectic, actually. There's a lot going on there. There are hour markers, kind of pronounced printed diagonal hour markers. Minute markers obviously also printed on. The left-hand side of the dial has a train track, but only between 7 and 12. The right-hand side has third of a minute markers also printed on. And between 6 and 7, you have fifth of a minute markers also printed on. The handset, though, is very simple and rather slender. There's not actually any loom on the hour hand and minute hand, so no loom video today. They're in blue to match the majority of the printing. The two sub-dial hands, love those. Full-on pixelation there. They're in yellow to match the rest of the printing on the dial. Let's have a look at them close up, slightly recessed, love those two hands. Never seen anything like it before and probably will never see anything like it again. I also love the Arabics they've chosen, very arcade game style for the 15, 30, 45 and 60 on the chrono timer register on the left. 12, 24 hour indicators, perhaps not the most useful complication on a watch, but at least they have done a good job with this one, at least it looks attractive as does the date complication down there at six. Nicely color matched with a black wheel and white Arabics and the coffee cup steaming away 8-bit style above it. On wrist, it wears really, really nicely, actually. 38 diameter, 41 end-to-end -end sounds all kinds of wrong if you're used to circular watches, which most of us are. You really have to wear one of these to appreciate it. Dimensions always sound small, but it wears perfectly, I think, and 10 and a half mil thick. Yeah, very good. Nice, comfortable strap, as noted, and a fairly muted colour palette. Overall, very nice. Overhead legibility is okay. As I said, the hands are pretty slender on this one, but it's not a diver. That's not really what this watch is all about, is it? Outside natural light, you can see a high polished upper surface to the case, just framing the sapphire, framing the dial, and you can see what I mean. Not an awful lot of anti-reflective undercoating, but it does a reasonable job of keeping things legible. And that's it on wrist, 22 millimeter lug width. These tonneau style cases always tend to have larger rather than smaller lug width, makes it look like a far more cohesive design overall. And as discussed, this leather strap is a good one, nice and soft. That's not to say that you couldn't swap it out for one of your own, but don't put a NATO on this, it would look pretty awful, I reckon. Looking down the wrist, 10 and a half mil thick, super short lug to lug. Any wrist size will get away with this one, no problems at all. But what are my moans and niggles with this Brew 8-bit? Well, I don't really have an awful lot. I said I would circle back to the warranty and I will. This is an excerpt from their website where they say they are proud to offer a 12-month warranty on all of their watches. I wouldn't be proud, Brew, to only offer a 12-month warranty. I think that is half of the industry standard warranty. I always call out watches when they don't have two years. Quartz is a little different because you have to make it clear that you're not covering the battery, but really they should be offering this one with two years minimum, I think. 
Talking of quartz, I know it puts a lot of people off. People see these mega quartz movements and think cheap and nasty. I see these mega quartz movements and I think two years of accurate and reliable timekeeping before I change the battery myself and it costs me a dollar. I think they're fantastic. I don't understand why there is such hatred for them within certain sections of the watch community. And obviously the whole 8-bit retro thing is going to be totally lost on probably the majority of people. Many people watching this video will be too old for it. Many people watching this video will be too young for it and it will just have no relevance to them whatsoever. But I am one of the people for whom it has particular relevance and particular significance. Perhaps it is unsurprising therefore that I find myself really liking this watch. So there you have it, my first taste of brew and I enjoyed the flavour. Really nice watch overall and not super catch, not ridiculous. You could totally get away with this one as a daily. Only on close inspection does it reveal its 1980 soul. If you like Mecha Quartz Chronos but can't quite stretch to the $400 for this one, why not check out a couple of more affordable alternatives? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.